This is the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability and there for persons with disability. My mandate is to prove that disability indeed is not inability. So walk, walk me through it. When you were called up for the gold medal, it was full of tears of joy. When I look at where I started, my goodness. And now God has brought me to this extent, representing Ghana with the gold medal. My goodness. I thank God. Six months, you sleep and you wake up and most of the black in your eye is gone and your, all your eyes are white. Any abled person out there who has the means, they should join hands to support someone like you because you are a voice for the voice. <laughs> like I say, you are welcome. Welcome to my world where disability is not inability. Thank you so very much. Well, hello and welcome to another exciting and inspiring edition of the Helping Hand TV show. As you know, the Helping Hand is an ability show and it's an initiative of the H4P organization where we seek to throw the spotlight on the abilities of persons with disability. And like I say, you are welcome to my world where disability is not inability. Special thanks to DV Unlimited Company Limited, SNR Company Limited for bringing us this program. And special thanks to you for tuning in. I'll go for a quick commercial break I'll be right back. Stay tuned. The Helping Hand TV Show will be right back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. And today, I want to introduce you to someone with so much ability. Some people call her the greatest friend. Others call her the sweet companion. And others still call her the faithful worker. She is dependable, reliable, and adorable. And she's committed to lending you a helping hand anytime, anywhere. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome DV Cleaners. DV Cleaners Alata Stamina Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Aloe Vera Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Body Lotions. DV Cleaners Hair Shampoo. DV Cleaners Hair Conditioners. DV Cleaners Liquid Detergents. DV Cleaners Toilet Cleaners. DV Cleaners Floor Cleaners. And DV Cleaners Cake Soups. For bulk purchases, call us on plus 233-278-308-246 or plus 233-244. 467-326 DV Cleaners, one of the top most made in Ghana products, proudly Ghanaian. And so remember that anytime you purchase any of the DV Cleaners range of products, you are lending a helping hand to a person with disability and you are supporting H4P organization's special advocacy for persons with disability. DV Cleaners! Nature's finest touch! Welcome back. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability and air. For persons with disability, I promise you another exciting episode. Um, today we are talking policy and we are talking with the policy makers. We have an honorable member of parliament in the house today. Wow. Let me quickly introduce you to my guest. Um, all throughout the season we've been talking disability issues and we've raised a lot of concerns. And this, my friend, has made time to come and help us um, solve the issues. Let us know what the policy makers, those who are taking the decisions, are thinking about persons with disability. Let me introduce you to my guest. Um, his name is Honorable John Majisi. Um, he hails from Boafri in the Volta region and is married with children. He is a strong Adventist. He holds a first and second degree from the University of Education, Winneba both in special education. Prior to this, he had acquired his general examination certificate in ordinary level from the Navarongo Secondary School. Further to the Bagabaga Training College in Temali for a three-year post-secondary um, teacher's certificate. He topped off with um, a teacher's diploma in education of the visually impaired from the College of Special Education, Mampo Kyapim. He also served as a teacher in various capacities throughout his period of time. Honorable Majisi worked as a project manager for the Krachi District community. 
based on rehabilitation projects where he facilitated the implementation and supervision of project activities and ensured the provision of sustainable rehabilitation services for the blind and visually impaired as well in the community. Well, after this, my guest was appointed by Sight Savers International West Africa Regional Office as a support staff, specifically a coordinator for the rehabilitation field workers. By dint of his enthusiasm and dedication to work, he was promoted to be technical advisor and coordinator for professional program for rehabilitation personnel. Now, all this is based on the community-based rehabilitation workers. Um, this encompasses the coordination of activities from the PPRP at the UEW, that's University of Education, Winneba, and the country as a whole. Well, it is not a surprise as he is appointed a lecturer and later doubled to be the coordinator for the community-based rehabilitation and disability studies, both in the Department of Special Education in the University of Education, Winneba. In December 2012, Honorable Majesty contested and convincingly won the National Democratic Congress primaries. <laughs> Went on further to win the seat of the then newly created Krachi in Chumuru constituency in the Volta region of Ghana. He is a member of Parliament of Ghana. Um, he belongs to the Committee on Lands and Forestry, the Committee of Members Holding Office of Profit. He has used his position as an MP over the years to advocate strongly for the cause of persons with disabilities, wow. ensuring that their fundamental rights and responsibilities are not denied from them. Due to his love for academia, he has been engaged in a part-time job as a part-time lecturer in the Department of Special Education at the University of Winneba. Um, Honorable Majesty has a lot of dissertations and publications to his credit. He has served and still serving on a number of committees and boards with not mentioning a board member of Inclusion Ghana and Gratis International. Well, Honorable Majesty enjoys farming as a hobby. Wow. Now, um, I read all this to let you know that my guest is not just a policymaker. He is involved in disability. Yeah. Um, I think by far, and I stand to be corrected, but I think by far he is the most um, vocal uh, member of parliament I know when it comes to disability issues. So we have the right man in the house. Yeah. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Honorable John Madisi. <laughs> Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you. It's, it's amazing your passion for persons with disability. Um, ever since um, I got to know you, every time we are doing anything with disability, you are there. You have been so much helpful to us. I want to find out, um, where do you get your passion for disability? <laughs> uh, I'm highly honored to be part of this special program. Thank you. When I left Bagabaga College of Education, I was sent to Salaga. Okay. And that was where I had my first teaching appointment. Okay. And I remember on one occasion, a man with visual impairment came to the school on a visit. Mm. He used to work with social welfare. Okay. So in an engagement with the children, he read the Braille. And, you know, it was like he was reading the Bible in Braille. And then we were also looking at the print. And it was exactly the same. Wow. <laughs> so it was, I said, no. If an individual has been able to do this, there are a lot of such people all over the place. Yeah. So what do we do? And to me, I think that I have a very serious responsibility to get engaged in supporting people who have visual impairment. Wow. And so that's how I got involved. And so when I had the opportunity to go and do a course, in fact, I had qualified for a study leave, which was after four years of my, my teaching. Okay. I told myself that I must get into college of special education. Wow. And started working seriously towards it. Mm. It was until 1988, so when I finally had admission to College of Special Education in Mampo okay. to do a three-year diploma program. And, and, and I remember when I got to the Digital Education Office mm. with my study leave application form, there was this man who told me that, ah, when people are going to do serious courses, <laughs> look at what you are going to do. are going to learn about blind people. We have even taught the sighted people we haven't seen anything out of it. I said, this is what I want to do. Wow. And that's the call wow. that I have. <laughs> so finally, I found myself in college of special education for 
the three years. Oh, yeah. And when I completed, I was sent to Acropon School for the Blind. Oh. And Acropon School for the Blind, apart from teaching, I worked very seriously with the children on the field. Okay. We were producing vegetables to feed the school. Wow. wow. Well, Wellbeach International okay. had a program. They used to support the special schools in some projects. Oh. And I was, they were looking for a project manager. Okay. Out of the 29 teachers that we had, I had 26 votes. Wow. 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 Hey. And, and it was, I think it was all because of the work that I was doing with the chair, apart from the normal yeah. teaching and all that. Then in the process, my, my father too became blind. Oh. You were working for the blind <laughs> and your father becomes blind? Father wow. became blind. My goodness. So I think I said, God knew why mm. he wanted me to do this kind of mm. thing. And, uh, so you were prepared I was, yeah, I was prepared ahead of yeah. time. Mm. Let's talk about discrimination just mm. before we get into yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the questions. Um, in all your work, yeah. um, young man coming up you get into disability yeah, yeah. didn't you face discrimination because yes, somebody was I saying that if you why got, don't you yeah, do if, a if better you, course yeah if you, if you got me right mm. from what the education officer told me exactly well, people are doing serious because look at what i'm doing mm. <laughs> and where well, in those days how many people were in the college or mm. in the university so you go back to holy go to school they ask what i do oh i'm doing the education for the visually impaired <laughs> It means that you don't know anything. Exactly. Uh, where you are have you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are in Winneba. When people are in and keep, because you are even in Winneba. And even in Winneba, you are doing education of the visual. And what about those other courses? So that description was there. Mm. But I remember what the Bible said. Forgive them for they know us know what they are doing. Mm. Mm. You see, out of total ignorance, mm. people say certain things, do certain things. Mm. So that discrimination, sometimes out of ignorance. Wow. If you are blessed to have the knowledge that disability is not inability. Mm. Person with disability form part of the normal society. Exactly. They have their potential and their quota to contribute. Yeah. They are a people mm. that belong to the world. Yeah. You will not make that comment. How many people have this knowledge? Yeah. So that discrimination is there. And then when you go around, they will not understand. Mm -hmm. You are learning Braille. <laughs> Sometimes, I remember somebody from the University of Cape Coast at mm. that time. That, I'm very sure they are going to give birth to children who have a disability. This is why he told me. Yes. I said, it's, well, I don't have to fight you. Uh, but it's all because... You don't know what you're saying. So I had to school him and all those other sort things. Of so for the discrimination is there. And if you are not very careful, you walk into the society, mm -hmm. you are with people and all that, other people come. Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, you will think that, why am I even in this profession? Yeah. So even, and when you look at the discrimination that yeah. I just talked about, even in my own house, my mother, as I told you, my father was blind. Mm. He put the food on the table. He would say, to my, he say you know, you don't know your food there. Wow. Can't you see? Wow. Yes, my own mother. Wow. And, and that's why I started sharing the when I recollect all these things. Wow. So that discrimination is not just with the person with disability, but even those who get mm. involved in so, uh, no, supporting yeah. them, they also have that discrimination. That, that is why we, we salute you um, wow. for your strength. <laughs> that is why we salute you for your strength. Um, we, 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 need, we need people like you. Yeah. Um, who are successful to champion this cause yeah, yeah, yeah. because when um we see that even successful people like disabled people mm -hmm. then those of us yeah, who are not yeah, too yeah, successful yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing yeah. um honorable um what would you tell somebody who is um still not understanding why we should give special attention to persons with disability what we need to understand is that a person with disability is first and foremost a human being. Yeah. Yeah. You just close your eyes mm. and send your mind somewhere else and take the disability out of the person. What do you see? Exactly. A human being. It's a human being. Yeah. Imagine that today the fellow had the visual impairment, vision is restored. What do you see? A human being. Amazing. And even. Look at the person with disability who can take his skin, leave his house, 
go to the work site, work and come back to the house, My make God. money, My have God. a family, even a better family. Wow. So what about you? Mm. Mm. So disability is not a barrier to the success of an individual. Yeah. Disability yeah. doesn't take the person out of society. My God. Once we are able to put the necessary provision in place, exactly. and it becomes a normal way of life. So for me, I think that people must understand that the person with disability can live a normal life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as we believe that when the disability is taken away, mm. the fellow is a human being. Mm. He can also live a normal life. If we make the necessary provision to, to address the problem that, or the challenge that the fellow has, wow. he's, a, he's a person on his own. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, you are still with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. I have my very special guest, Honorable John Majisi, with me. And um, already, we are learning a lot. I'll go for a quick commercial break. I'll be right back with the Helping Hand TV show. Still to come on the Helping Hand TV show. Honorable, freestyle segment. What would you do for me? Suddenly, I'm going to dance. Ah! <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you so much. And welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. And I have my very special guest, the Honorable John Majisi. Um, Honorable, um, preparing for your interview, um, I sent um, a questionnaire to um, all the disability groupings um, that um, I'm bringing Honorable. Um, if you have questions you want me to post to him, um, they sent their questions. Um, that is why I have this file. So today, we have a lot of work to do. Okay. So I'm going to start with the Ghana Blind Union, yeah. because um, you seem to have that passion for the blind. Yeah, so yeah. I'll start with the questions from the Ghana Blind Union. Their first question is this. How do parliamentarians ensure that blind and partially sighted people are part of various employment programs of the government? Example, NACOP, mm -hmm. NYA, YEA, and all that. Yeah. How do parliamentarians ensure? Yeah, let, let me look at the, the total population or the totality of it. Okay. There are quite a number of policies that we have in Ghana. Yeah. And they are constitutionally make provision for persons with disability to be recognized as part of the normal system. Yeah. If you look at uh, our disability law, Act 715, mm. also makes a provision for persons with disabilities. Yeah. If it concerns the inclusion of persons with disabilities. Yeah. If you look at uh, this uh, you, the YEA -E policy, yeah. where uh, you know, the young one, the youth are engaged. Yeah. There's a quota for persons with disability in all the streams. Oh, okay. Yes, in all the streams, they're supposed to be given a quota. Okay. And then, if you, there's even a specific module for mm. persons with disability. And I it's see. one of the questions that I've even submitted to Parliament as to why that module is not being uh, implemented. implemented. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with Parliament, Parliament will make very good laws. Okay. The laws are now left to the various institutions to implement, to, to implement them. Okay. But the problem we have is awareness. Okay. To what extent are people even aware that those laws exist? Yeah. yeah. You see? So, and then we, I think one of the responsibilities that we are not taking up seriously is uh, the oversight responsibility. Okay. If we have made the laws, we have to get the responsibility of following up to see whether the laws yeah, are implemented. implemented. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the, the laws are there. The necessary provisions are there when it comes to employment. Mm. And for me, I believe that the individual MP mm. must have an engagement with the disassembly. Okay. And that's exactly what I've been doing. Okay. The individual MP needs to have a serious engagement with the MP, which means the MP himself must understand. Mm. Mm. And be convinced that it is important. Mm -hmm. It is a responsibility mm -hmm. for persons with disability to be part of the normal system. Yeah. To be employed like any other person. Mm. To have the opportunities like any other person. Mm -hmm. If that person as an individual doesn't even understand, doesn't know, mm. how then does he go to exactly. enforce it? Exactly. So for me, that is the gap. Exactly. And like someone like me, who is aware that persons with disabilities have a, an, they, they, are, they have 
opportunity for everything like any other person. Mm -hmm. The district assembly works with me directly. Okay. So when it came to employment at the youth and employment level, mm -hmm. I made sure a person with disabilities were engaged. Okay. Yes. But honorable, most of the time, um, members of parliament are so busy, they don't have time to yeah. engage with yeah. their communities. Yeah. What we are, we, if if we say we don't have a lot of time, so why are we engaged? <laughs> <laughs> we are engaged for votes. Yeah, that's our concern, which is totally wrong. Okay, totally wrong. Whatever engagement that you have with your community members, the issue of disability must be part of it. Wow, you are going to meet a community. Mm -hmm. So what did you think about people with disabilities in that community? Mm. Yeah, because we want votes, you go and talk about. People who can vote for you mm. and all that. So for me, I think that no, it's not a matter of time. We have time for other things. Okay. So why not for each of disability? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Oh, no, but there's another question here from the um, Ghana Blind Union. How does Parliament ensure that the employment equity, as captured in the Disability Act, is observed by employers? That, 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 that is why I'm saying that our oversight responsibility is very important. Mm. If we had been engaging seriously with the ministries, okay. uh, the departments, and the various institutions that are there, that would have sorted out this, this problem. Mm -hmm. So after the law, what do we do? Mm. After because the law, what do we do? In the law and yes, it's not working. Yes, yeah. it's not working. Even the whole law is not working to mm. a certain level. Mm. So it's not just about the employment. Yeah. So for me, I think that that's the responsibility. The oversight responsibility must be looked at. And the ministries okay. need to be aware of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know who is responsible for educating them. Okay. So it is important that as a ministry, when you are doing your program of work for the whole year, mm. there must be a component of his disability. Definitely. It's not any big deal. Mm. You are doing it for other people. What about mm -hmm. people with disabilities? It should be a normal thing. So the ministries, for the Ministry of Employment, uh, local government, the disassembly, mm. whatever opportunity that are there, even this NAPCO. Mm -hmm. How many people have persons with disabilities are going to be engaged? Yeah. So those who apply, strictly we, the government must look at it uh -huh. and make sure that they are part and parcel of it. Uh -huh. Because they have all the qualifications, they have all the requirements and all those other things yeah. to be engaged like any other person. So for me, I think one important thing is to have a national dialogue. There should be very serious monitoring process on mm. the ground. Mm. So that we can follow up some of the good things that we talk about in parliament. Exactly. To ensure yeah. that the people are already complying mm. to those things. We, if you say all these things, how do we ensure? And uh, okay, just open your mouth and say I'm ensuring. Mm. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you make serious for our monitoring, bring people to book and all those other yeah. things. Because the opportunities are always there, already there. Now it comes to access. Exactly. How do the person with disability also access those opportunities? Yeah. We are not creating for any different world. It's the same world. Yeah. But the opportunity must be equal, accessible, yeah. and all that. So there will, and so life becomes normal for everybody. Mm. I, 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 I get you. Um, I, I would move on from the Ghana Blind Union um, and go to Sheke Ghana. Um, yeah. My friend Nanaya has a question. Um, she is the yeah. founder of yeah. Sheke Ghana. Yeah. She says that Sheke is trying to get out of the rehab center because yeah. the place is not too accessible. Okay. Um, they, are, they are finding out whether if they do that, they'll be given accommodation and their staff will be paid by the states yeah. as um, Sheke Ghana. If, if, if they already have a facility there, why don't they rather be working towards making it accessible? Well, I just talked about it. They have, a, they have a facility there. Okay. And the workers are being paid by government, isn't yeah. it? No, the workers are being paid by Sheke. Are being paid they by Sheke. They to pay uh -huh. their workers. Okay. So she's asking whether, he said, we don't know if parliament can help us here. Yeah. As I said, I will, I will not be able to sit here to talk about it. Okay. But I can help them to get in touch with the committee. Uh, they can make, meet the committee on uh, employment and social welfare. Okay. They will have that opportunity to, to tell them whatever is available. Okay. So anytime they are Ready. interested. But I, I feel very bad. I was trying to link one organization like that. Try that. How to get the leadership became a very big problem. Wow. But I think that we can still go over it. Yeah. We can still make an effort to make sure they're able to meet them. So how, how easy would it be um, if Sheke wants to meet the committee? Uh, as I, as if I have a letter, mm. uh, I'll try to get a chairman okay. and then give it to him okay. or discuss with him. In fact, that's why I feel very last, last term, for example, 
I tried for one way. I can't quite read. I think it's Nana. I don't know whether it's Nana. Yeah. Okay. One of the institutions. Okay. And you don't get the man in parliament, you <laughs> know, running around and all those things. Yeah. But we shouldn't give up. Okay. The fight is not ended. Okay. We need to continue to make the effort to get in touch. Thank you. So if we have a letter, official letter, I okay. can give it out to them. And then, you know, perhaps try to get close to the person. Thank you so no, much. You are still with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. This is the policy segment. This is the policy show. The helping hand, we are talking policy. We are trying to help the disabled community. And we are talking to Honorable John Majisi. I'll go for 60 seconds success break. I'll be right back with the show. Welcome to 60 seconds success with Apostle. Today we continue our adventure on our journey to success. You see, the success equation would never be complete until you decide on what to believe and what to ignore. You must decide on who you should believe and who you should ignore. You see, when you ask any successful person, I'm sure they will tell you that on their journey to success, there were times they had to choose what to believe and what to ignore. Sometimes when you are on your journey to success, there will be information about why you will not succeed. Somebody knows why you cannot make it. Somebody knows why it is impossible to achieve what you say you'd achieve. But you see, every successful person knows that on the journey of success, it is very important to make a decision as to what to believe and what to ignore, who to believe and who to ignore. Thank you. Welcome back. Well, yeah, welcome back to the show. Yeah, with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. I have my very special guest, Honorable John Majisi, with me. Honorable, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, please, one more question from Sheke Ghana. Um, it says that the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations, they have identified some gaps in the disability law after extensive consultations with its associates. Now, the ministry says they are going to start stakeholder consultations. Yeah. Why don't they look at what has been done? Okay. I think it's very important. Mm. What consultation are we going to do? Mm. We already have something on the ground. Mm. Shall we not be able to look at the gaps that are there mm. and see how we can address these gaps? Mm. Otherwise, we have looked at the gaps and to think that the consultations can give us the answers. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know which is which. <laughs> so I would have thought that once we have the gaps already identified, is it possible for us to, to fill in the gaps? Mm. Um, where can we get the answers from? Mm. And I think that, that probably that is what okay. the, the ministry is doing. Okay. But ha, ha, to what extent are we assured that we have exhausted the identification of the the gaps. Okay. Have we been able to comprehensively identify this? Oh, I remember some time ago we were doing some work with Ghana Federal. They had employed some law firm. Okay. And we had a series of meetings, to, not from Parliament, okay. but for like with my engagement with the, the Federation. Okay. To look at the gaps. The thing ended nowhere. Oh. Yes. It ended nowhere. So that is where the problem is. So more work must be done in more work must be done the gaps. All the gaps. So okay. that we, we can we can it can have some kind of relationship with uh, uh, the UN Convention yeah. on the rice. Yeah. Because that is the mother convention that exactly. takes care of all these things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we saw ours to be more medical than the social <laughs> model of disability. <laughs> uh, and so the Federation must serve as a pressure group. Mm. The frustrations and those embarrassments can come. Exactly. But for my belief that they shouldn't give up. Yeah. And now encourage them to have a lot of engagement with Parliament. There's a disability related okay, what the committee mm. that the committee on employment and social welfare they must be able to have that close relationship with them and that will help them to push the agenda forward. Okay, that assurance I can give them. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Um, this is from um, a group called Special Mothers. Um, my friend Hannah has she's a founder of Special Mothers. Mm. Um, she says that for us, the major concern is how government involve parents to ensure the implementation of the already existing policies. Yeah. Where does a parent go if we have to test the laws and it doesn't work as expected? Mm. What do we do? 
as a parent. But our last stop is in the law court. Okay. So if you think that you are not, the people are discriminating against you, uh, they are uh, trampling on your rights, the best place to go to is the law court. But of course, I would encourage you to pass through the, the, like, you know, trying to get an engagement with the people, okay. organizations, and then finally, if you don't succeed, then you find yourself in the, because it's a law. Mm -hmm. So the best people to interpret it is at the law court. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be expensive. Yeah. You have to um, go for a lawyer. And, yeah. and I'm a parent with a child yeah. with disability. Already the disability is draining my finances. Yeah. Uh, vulnerable, that would be... <laughs> I, 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 I think so. I think so. There's a lot of sense in this kind of agreement mm. where you cannot even take care of your daily life. Yeah. Then you find yourself going to court and mm. all that. You see, this, this is why the disability law must be looked at very seriously. Mm. If we are able to close the gaps... We all get committed to find all the ministers mm -hmm. on their feet doing what they expected to do. Mm. I'm not sure that there will be this problem. Wow. So, once again, I am encouraging us to category. I will find a time and invite the, the committee, sit with them. They can push the agenda with the various ministries. Mm. I think it's very important. Okay. There's nothing that is impossible, mm. but perhaps the process. And don't ever give up. If you give up, you, 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 you lose a lot. Mm -hmm. So let's have an engagement with Parliament. And Parliament, I'm not saying come to the, uh, the whole Parliament has said, but the committee that the is responsible okay. should be able to support you. Okay. And of course, we shouldn't leave out the Ministry for Social Protection and all that. Okay. Okay. Honorable, let's, let's, let's take a question from Ghana National Association for the Deaf. Mm -hmm. um, they say that the government commits itself to progressive realization of the rights of individuals who are deaf mm -hmm. and hard of hearing in Ghana, yeah. especially their uh, inalienable rights to information, yeah. um, through the signing and ratifying of the UN Convention uh -huh. on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Uh -huh. So, NAD, Ghana National Association of the Deaf, um, wants to know what efforts have been made by the state yeah. in ensuring that private media houses in Ghana are providing information that are accessible to deaf people, um, especially with the issue of sign language. I will, I will find it very difficult to answer this question with regards to whatever program the government has put in place. Mm. But wh what I've observed, the individuals and the various organizations okay. are now realizing the fact that the sign language is very important. Mm. And uh, for me, I believe that the opportunity is there. Okay. Opportunity is there if you're able to have a good engagement with the minister mm. and also with, the, with parliament. Okay. Some of these things can be pushed up. Do you think mm. um, if we get, say, Parliament or yeah. the Ministry paying for the sign language interpreters yeah. and then sending them to the various institutions, yeah. that could help? That's, that, 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 that is very important because there, there are a lot of opportunities. For example, I was just talking about this in Abuco. Mm -hmm. People are going to be employed. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I said was about the engagement of these people at the University of Education. Okay. We have this disability fund all over the place. The mm. Central Assembly, they don't even know how they manage to be disbursed. <laughs> there are professionals on the ground mm. who can be sent to the various disassemblies. Yeah. Get them engaged. Like this sign language uh, interpreters. Yeah. Why don't we get them engaged in the various disassemblies? Mm -hmm. So that if education has a program that needs a sign language interpreter, the same okay. person can go there, yeah. like Minister of Health. Yeah. So these are some of the advocacies that we need to put up. Okay. And it will make a lot of sense. Okay. Because if... We are saying that there are no jobs. The government can know. Well, now there are jobs. government says it's going to give people 700 Ghana cities. <laughs> now those, the sign language interpreters, can you call it qualify for that? Mm -hmm. So this is the right time for us to do a lot of advocacy. Yeah. They have one more question on labor, um, yeah. if I could read it. In, in some countries, the state makes arrangements to ensure access to the labor market by persons with disabilities. Yeah. In the case of deaf people, the state pays for the cost of sign language interpreters yeah. at all interviews yeah. so that the cost related to the interpretation services do not discourage employers yeah. from hiring yeah, individuals yeah. who are deaf and hard of hearing. Yeah. NAD wants to know how Parliament is playing these supervisory roles mm. and how the state is ensuring that employers are willing to employ deaf people. Now, I think that we have gone over and over <laughs> this particular issue. Mm. It's all because all about the abuse and the commitment of the country with regards to the rights of persons with disabilities. Okay. Because these are very basic things. Mm. If it is a sign language interpreter, that sign language interpreter can be, you know, used to do a lot of things in the district. Yeah. So for me, I believe that it is not just about the interview and all those things, but generally, 
So that is why we have to re look at our disability law mm -hmm. and really have a more positive and serious engagement with the policy makers mm -hmm. and then the, the ministries. Okay. And that is very useful. We shouldn't just look at one thing in isolation. Mm -hmm. I believe that if we are very comprehensive and committed to our disability law and the right of persons with disability, mm -hmm. all these are very you know, little things that we can easily overcome. Mm -hmm. We have the people. Yeah. We have the labor force. Yeah. We have a lot of interpreters all over the place. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? They have no jobs to do. Exactly. We are employing people. Why are we not employing them? Wow. So that is why we need to look at... The, I mean, I teach a girl who is uh, deafblind in, uh, what do you call, Winneba. Oh. And if it's so easy. You have some of the students doing the interpretation for her. I see. I, Sylvia, it's making the grace like any other person. Wow. It, it is there and then I even had that f personal contact with her, somebody who is deafblind. Wow. And this, do you know what he told me? He said he wanted to marry, but he wanted to marry a pastor. Because he thinks that other people are cheats. <laughs> <laughs> So he was asking me <laughs> to get wife. I said, no, I cannot select. Mm -hmm. Love is between two people. Two, two people. <laughs> <laughs> and is it, there is living, living a normal life mm -hmm. just with some little support from the colleagues. Exactly. So that is why I'm saying that our attitudes, we, we get up and put in place ad hoc programs. Yeah. Look at, look at this uh, disability fund mm. that has been put there. It's quite useful. Mm. But look at the way we use it. Exactly. Even at the time they were drawing the guidelines that recently, they didn't engage persons with disabilities. Wow. I remember nothing about us without us. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so what is it? The money is there. The fund is there. You're going to use it. It's a good program. Mm. Just engaging them to look at how they can be part of it. Mm. It's not that. I hear you, Honorable. Well, you are still with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. I have my very special guest, Honorable John Majisi. Um, he's been answering our questions. I'll go for a quick break. Uh, it's the feedback segment, and uh, I'll be right back. Welcome to the feedback segment on the Helping Hand TV show. We appreciate comments you send on our social media platforms, the calls you make to us, and mails we receive from you. We will do our best to address your concerns. Stay tuned. Feedback from Mahmoud Serena, Sunyani, Ghana. Thank you, Bishop Dr. Charles Hackman, for this interview. Honorable Majesty is a very good example of one who truly wants to contribute to the welfare and development of persons with disabilities in Ghana. May the Almighty God bless him to be a blessing to others. God bless you, Bishop. Send your comments or questions to our email, helpinghandshow at gmail.com. You can also send an SMS or WhatsApp message to plus 233-209-555-777. Or you can follow us on Facebook, The Helping Hand TV Show. Thank you. One of the organizations of Mobile Helping Hand TV Show um, hey, sorry, be a friend of Wet Fire Generation Ministries. Um, many Omo leaders know Ekasa and Sayeba program also. Um, and they have good news for you. Um, they are willing to support. They are willing to support. Um, especially Akalano and like all the things you talked about. Um, Wet Fire Generation Ministries. Um, every now and then, whatever happens. At H4P, we love to put smiles on the faces of persons with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to make you smile. At H4P, we love to wipe the tears of persons with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to give you experiences that will fill you with tears of joy. At H4P, we love to lend a helping hand families of persons with disability. At Fire City Chapel, we love to help families grow in the grace and love of God. At age 4 p we love to empower children and young people with disability. At Fire City Chapel, we love to train children in the way they should go, so that when they grow, they will not depart from it. At age 4 p we love to give to persons with disability. At Fire City Chapel, we love to give. Surely, some things are meant to be together. Fire City Chapel stands together with H4P organization. Together, together we stand. Fire City Chapel and H4P 
bringing dignity to disability. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for staying with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. This is the Helping Hand TV show, and I have Honorable John Majesty answering all our questions from the disability community. Um, Honorable, this is also from the Ghana National Association of the Deaf. Interesting one on education. Mm. And since you are also in education, um, I, I'm really looking for your answer on that. Um, they say that while the role of parliament is to make laws, it has the other rules of ensuring um, that those responsible implement it. Under previous governments, the state has established countless senior high schools, including community senior high schools. Mm. Unfortunately, in Ghana, um, we have over 14 basic schools for the deaf, mm. but we have only one fully SHS in Mampong and an integrated one in Navrongo in the Upper East Region. Yeah. Now, this means that unlike hearing candidates from JHS who can make choice concerning the school they wish to go to, deaf candidates are not privileged to these choices. The only SHS in Mampong has been overcrowded and in a rented building for the past 40 years. Deaf candidates just have one way. You either accept it or stay at home. Yeah. Now, Ghana National Association for the Deaf wants to find out what plans are in place for the future of deaf people mm -hmm. because there have been many efforts to convert one of the community senior high schools to an additional SHS for the deaf, but it's not working. Okay. The establishment of schools is done by the Ghana Education Service in collaboration with the, with the ministry. Okay. I don't know where they have gone to, okay. but I think that there's a lot of sense in what they are saying. Mm. They are so limited mm -hmm. as far as the senior secondary school mm -hmm. education is. Mm -hmm. So for me, they must begin to look at getting back to the, the Ministry of Education. And, okay. then, and of course, uh, the special education should be able to come in to do this. Mm. Is so it why we are discussing all this? And I think they are equipping me with a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps when we finish, one advice I would like to give is some of these things. Okay. I I am being very careful mm. that I don't get myself committed. Okay. So some of these things can be tabled in Parliament as questions, okay. and I'm sure the opportunity will be given to me to ask the ministers or whoever is concerned to be able to answer ask them, you know. To give us the necessary answers. Thank you very much. And then, the you, 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 are, you, are when, when, you are when the questions are asked, mm. the speaker can set a committee to go into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it is done. Okay. Yeah. Let's mm. get the questions written. Mm. We can sit down together. I'll just put them in. And then, the opportunity will be given for the minister to come and answer them. I think it's very important. These questions are so relevant. Mm. Mm. There are things that I wouldn't have thought about. Mm. But this has opened my eyes as to the challenges that we are facing. Okay. And we need to address them. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Um, well, it, it, it's, it's time for music. We've done policy talking. We've done all that. We'll cross over to Elom for a spot of music. We'll be right back with the show. Yeah. 
so much. Welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show. Um, I still have Honorable John Majesty with me. Honorable, thank you so much for your yeah. time. I'm so, so grateful. Um, I, I will do one more question yeah. from the Ghana Blind Union, okay. and then um, we'll move to the freestyle segment. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is from the Ghana Blind Union. How do parliamentarians ensure that blind and partially sighted persons benefit from the free education system? Example, in respect of textbooks and other learning equipment. Yeah. We, we as MPs have the opportunity to support school children mm. with our common fund and we also have a facility from Get Fund. Okay. Uh, these are two opportunities that we can use. Mm. For example, if somebody who is partially sighted or is totally blind mm. wants to support, he writes an application to okay. the MP. Okay. And then MP will have to approve for the money to be paid to the person. Okay. Usually if the fellow is asking for textbooks mm. and other equipment. You need to bring an invoice. He has to get an invoice to cover the cost of the things that he wants he to wants buy. To get. Okay. If it is paying for the cost of education, mm. school fees, okay. he has to bring the bill from the school okay. with an ad uh, application letter mm. and then also an admission letter. There okay. must be an indication that the fellow is a student. I, I understand. Yes. <laughs> so these are the three conditions that you need to. And this can be paid from the common fund okay. or the get fund that is being given to us. Okay. I even sometimes provide wheelchairs and canes yeah. to support it. It's not just the yep. books and all that, yep. but other necessary assistive devices. So provided. they have to get to their MP? Yeah, they, have to, they can get to the MP. Okay. Like any other person comes in. Okay. Many people come, we have paid their school fees and all that. Yeah. So you call it a fellow okay. who is visually impaired or is totally, I mean, has blindness. Can you call apply? Okay. Yeah. And like I said, because of my involvement with them, I rather, I, uh, most of the time, consider them first mm -hmm. before I get to other, other people. Mm. Yeah. One thing I want to add is that yes. I w we shouldn't just be looking to the National Federation or the National Associations. Okay. Our grassroots association must be empowered enough. Okay. Because at that level, you are dealing directly with the disassembly. Mm -hmm. At that level, you are dealing directly with your MP, like any other person. Okay. So, okay. power must trickle down to the local associations. Mm -hmm. The federation must be able to empower those at the grassroots. Mm. So, that even at that level, they can fight for their rights. Okay. Because you don't expect people to travel from Accra, get to Krachin Tumuru to mm. solve their problems there. I have personally built an, and got an office for the, for the association there. Wow. Where they have their media, I bought a computer for them, wow. and all those other things. Wow. And they relate directly with the disassembly. Okay. The assembly wants to do something, they even call me. Okay. I give a technical support. Mm. I remember when this money was sent about the disability fund. Mm -hmm. I said, look, you are going to provide this fund. People are going to write letters. What, on what basis are you giving out the fund? Exactly. There must be basic need assessment, mm -hmm. which involves the family and the person mm -hmm. and the disassembly to actually put in place the that specific needs of that person. Mm. It's not all people who need the money. Mm. Some of them just need assistive devices. Mm -hmm. Some of the people even need counseling. Yeah. Some of them need mobility training, mm. as simple as that. So you cannot just get and say, oh, somebody has read, I want money. Mm. And we must support them to take a decision. Okay. The father will say, oh, we are individuals. But then someone, if as we sit here, mm -hmm. how many of us can think on our own? <laughs> <laughs> not, that we, not that we don't have the mind, mm. but we don't have the opportunity to, be, to really identify our needs. Yeah. So somebody else comes, come, must come into mm -hmm. it. The council and all those yeah. uh, must go into that package. And it's very important for all of us. Okay. Even we, if you look at you, you get up, you take a decision, then you go somewhere and then you regret that you have taken that decision. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of doing comprehensive assessment for yeah. everybody okay. is necessary. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. All right, so freestyle segment um, is a segment on the show where I allow my guests to do anything freestyle. Anything freestyle. Um, they can decide to sing, they can decide to dance, they can decide to recite a poem. Um, anything freestyle. Honorable, freestyle segment. What would you do for me? Certainly, I'm going to dance. Ah! <laughs> All right, so I would ask my director if we have some danceable song. Honorable, the floor is yours.
Thank you so much, Honorable, for making time um, to be with me on this show. Um, we have been so enlightened. We move straight on to the game segment. Um, at the beginning of the show, we gave numbers to every member of the audience. Um, you are going to shuffle some balls and choose a lucky number. Um, the person with the lucky number wins a free gift from DV Unlimited, Company Limited. And so Honorable has not just come to help us answer our questions. He's going to help somebody to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let the games begin. Let the games begin. <laughs> so free and fair elections. So Honorable, you close your eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you shuffle the ball, then pick one. Yes, please pick one. Okay, so the lucky number for today is 16. Number 16, anybody with? All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, Honorable will do us the honors. Okay. And um, present number 16. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much for making this um, an exciting show. <laughs> special thanks um, to my very special guest, Honorable John Majesty, um, for making time out of his busy schedule to be with us today in the studios. Honorable, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you to Wet Fire Generation Ministries. Um, they've been my studio audience for today. Always fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And let me say that um, every member of the audience is going to walk away with a free gift from wow. H4P organization. Wow. Thank you so much. And special thanks to my crew, my fantastic crew. Thank you for making this happen. And thank you for watching. Um, remember that disability is not inability, and we need to put our hands together and create an environment that supports persons with disability to live an independent life. Well, you have with me the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. This has been the Helping Hand TV show. I will come your way again next week. God bless you.